In this video, we're gonna show you how we tested eight benchtop thickness planers, and we ranked them in order to give you the best portable thickness planer. Thickness planers are primarily a woodworking tool, but it's also often used by finish and trim carpenters in the workshop, and also sometimes out in the field. Thickness planers perform three very important tasks for woodworkers and carpenters. Things like smoothing rough stock, making the faces of wood boards parallel, and of course, what everybody thinks of is bringing the stock to a consistent and specific thickness. The eight models that we tested are listed in the description below and also in the article on toolboxbuzz.com. We did our best to reproduce real world use and we checked things such as snipe, which equals um, wasted board feet. Uh, we looked at no load feed speed. Um, we compared it to load feed speed. We looked at overall quality of the plane board and, as co of course, features of the tools. So, all right, let's, let's just get down to it. Let's talk about the features and specifications. The portable thickness planers have... Um, they got a lot to squeeze in. They need a lot of power in a small footprint and they need to be reasonably sized so you can move them around the shop. But even with these limitations, there are some substantial differences in size and weight of the machines that we tested. And they range from 58 all the way up to 92 pounds. And look at the article for more detail on that. Um, the bottom line is every machine is capable of planing boards between 12 and 13 inches wide, six inches tall. The specifics and those differences of each planer are listed in the article on toolboxbus.com. In fact, if you want more specific detail on these planers, you need to read the article because the video that I do is always a shorter, more condensed version. Let's talk about the testing procedures and our evaluations. For this evaluation, we use several types of wood on the planer for the planers um, in order to give you a perspective on performance. So we looked at um, we looked at planing the following boards. We planed 1x4 mahogany decking, 1x6 white oak, 1x6 hard maple, and 1x8 poplar boards. And we evaluated several categories, including um, pretest. So we pretest -pre inspection of the tool and adjustment right out of the box. We looked at feed rate, speed. We looked at the maximum depth of cut performance. Um, and also depth of cut accuracy, as well as we looked at snipe evaluation and surface finish evaluation, um, because that's super important if you think about it. And then lastly, we looked at blade change difficulty and timing. So uh, for the pretest inspection and adjustments, we basically unboxed these tools, put them on the bench top, and we adjusted, we checked and adjusted the infeed and outfeed tables. And we wanted to do that to ensure that they were level with the planer bed. This is important, and you need to you need to do this in order to achieve and 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 get representative test right. Um, the as shipped accuracy of the tables varied between different models. We used a level to set the tables and to measure a vertical gap between the infeed and the outfeed tables. We adjusted the infeed and outfeed tables, and we checked for level across the entire machine. So. We found the worst vertical deviation measured from the edge of that outfeed table, right, where the planer bed is, was nearly an eighth of an inch above the surface of the planer bed table. That's outrageous. That has, you can't do that. So all the machines except the DeWalt DW735X needed minor adjustments to reach level surface. Most of the planers utilize what's called a bolt and nut adjustment to move that table vertically and it's a captured nut, so it holds it in place. All of the units had similar table adjustments, but one. Um, we were really impressed with the Makita planer. It uses a set screw adjustment. So the Makita machine has by far the easiest adjustment measurement or adjustments of all the planers. There were four set screws, two on each table, and it's easy to reach, and we found the dial just, you could dial in what you needed, so nice. Um, look, we're not going to rank this category because we feel that a benchtop planer like these tools always require some sort of setup and fine tuning. Of the eight planers, Makita definitely had the best system for making those adjustments. 
uh, dust collection. While we didn't rank dust collection, it is absolutely worth discuss discussing with you. Um, look, thickness planers, they produce a ton, high, high volume of wood chips and dust. Um, and more than so than probably any tool in my shop. All of the planers, except one, come with a dust shroud so the planers can be attached to a dust collector. The Porta cable does not come with a shroud and there's no accessory available. So anyone that is interested in this model, you just gotta be prepared and plan for, clean up and, and, and do that as part of your, your project, it's part of your plan. Um, all of the other planers tested worked well when attached to dust collection and had very little variation in performance among the different models, so we did not rank them. Um, feed rate or speed. The winner for feed rate was the DeWalt DW735X and we recorded the no load sp uh, feed rates for each planer. To do this, we basically adjusted each planer's depth until it just, it contacted the wood but did not reach the depth where it would actually, the cutter blades would cut into the wood. Um, in order to record the no load feed for the rate section of wood that we were looking at, we wanted to record 45 inches um, for each sample. We used a 60 inch long board. We made marks at 45 inches so that we could start a timer and end a timer at our marks. So this allowed us to visually time the 45 inch section as it passed by a reference point on the planer for each planer. And we did this test three times each to come up with an average. And um, we used this comparison between the no load and the fully loaded feed rates of each machine later on. So we were looking at these, um, we were, we were looking to see which planers had enough power to sustain the no load feed rates throughout different boards that we planed. And this just gives us a good relative comparison of how the motors performed under load. That's why we did it. The DeWalt 735X and the Triton TPT125 were able to keep their feed rates close to the no load feed rate when compared to the rest in that field. We, um, we did rank this category as it's a great way to evaluate the power of these planers. So the top three included the DeWalt 735X, the Triton TPT125, and the Delta 22-590. All right, um, maximum depth of cut performance. So we, we wanted to we wanted to know how each machine performed at maximum loads, right? So, uh, which results from cutting a maximum depth in a single pass that the, uh, obviously under manufactured recommendations. So more specifically, we wanted to know which planer pulled more power, maximum amp draw, and which one had the best feed performance relative to that no load condition that we tested for. So during this test, we set up each planer to its maximum depth of cut, and that's as recommended to the, by the manufacturer. It's usually 3 30 seconds of an inch. We ran four species of wood through, through all, all of the planers. We recorded the time of the cut and the amperage profile for each cut. Each wood sample for each machine was 45 inches in length. This was, um, this was the same length of our no load speed that I mentioned earlier, and our team we basically we set up a Fluke 3001 FC recording ammeter, and we measured we measured the values on a one second interval, and then we sent that data via a wireless link to our computers for analysis later on. So the wood samples used in this were um, one by four mahogany decking, one by eight poplar, one by six oak, and one by six maple. We knew that the one by eight poplar at maximum cut was going to tax the power of these planers, but we also wanted to see how the different hardwoods would exercise the planer capacity. So um, while we're not ranking this category, we do feel that the data was interesting and informative. As you can see, when you look at the data, the DeWalt 735X pulls some serious amps under load, really high amps, and it points out to much more powerful motor in that unit. The power difference was clear during the planing operations as it didn't seem to care what we put through it. It just ate the wood up. Um, it never bogged, nothing, it just was beautiful. So it's important to note that if you're gonna buy the DeWalt 735X, you're gonna wanna use a dedicated 20 amp circuit as it's going to run better than a 15 amp circuit. Uh, I, I was surprised, we have 20 amps here in the shop, but I was surprised we weren't blowing circuits. 
Um, let's talk about depth of cut accuracy because the, the DeWalt 734 won that. Um, all planers have these dials and you can move the cutter heads up and down in, in depth of cut. On each model, the dial indicates how far the heads move up and down um, per revolution of the dial. And we use calipers to measure the average thickness for each wood sample and after a pass to remove 3 30 seconds of an inch. We then compared how accurately each planer was able to do that and the average deviation for that 3 30 seconds of an inch. And as you can see above in our charts, the DeWalt DW734 performed the best with an average deviation from 3 30 seconds of just under two one thousandths of an inch. Now the DeWalt 735X came in second and it was just over four one thousandths of an inch and that was followed by the rigid R4333, R4-4331 which was just five one thousandths of an inch. Last place was Titan and Titan came in or averaged I should say three hundredths of an inch deviation. Um, snipe evaluation. We tested how much material would be lost to snipe. In other words, how much are you cutting off the board to get your project done? We selected maple wood for the snipe test. And we thought that the lighter color and the tight grain structure of this maple would, uh, or basically might show the location and the depth of the snipe better than the other woods. And I think that was a good decision on our part. So for this test, we set all the planers to a uniform depth of 330 seconds. We started the pieces of wood in the first roller and then we let the planer just take it. We took our hands off and we let it go right through the planer and it would drop on the as it came out the out feed. We then rubbed chalk powder, blue chalk powder, in the last six inches of each board to, sh to show, um, to bring out the condition of the snipe visually so we could capture it with photographs and stuff like that. Um, we recorded the ridge of each snipe so that we could measure that amount of material that each planer produced and basically produced it as waste uh, because you have to cut that off in order to keep a uniform thickness. What's interesting about this data is how well the snipe length correlates to the distance between the actual rollers inside the planers. The distance between the cutting heads and the rollers. The length of snipe of all the models we tested nearly mimicked that distance. The nice thing is that the snipe should be predictable for each model and it allows you to plan accordingly, just plan extra waste. Um, users of the DeWalt 735X will ultimately waste more material over the life of their planer. Um, however, with all the planers having a relative amount, same amount of snipe, we're not ranking it because it was so close. All of them were so close. We're just going to let you see the information and be able to compare it yourself. Um, one very important uh, evaluation was the surface finish. And that, the winner of that was the DeWalt 735X. Another consideration when evaluating a planer is surface finish and thickness planers are used, uh, we, the, you know, obviously you're rotating these boards to shave off the surface. And as a result, that rotational movement takes small size bites or chunks are removed with each blade contact on that surface. And that results in very slight ridges, mill marks, that are left on the board. Um, we call them milling marks, mill marks. Planers can also take out chunks. And we refer to that as scallops, or scalloping, and that's a, a surface um, observation. Between the mill marks and the scallops, the board needs more or less sanding or prep to create a finished surface that you can paint, stain, or clear finish. So we use blue uh, chalk again to the surface to highlight the milling marks and bring out the scallops. And we did a visual inspection of this. We also evaluated the smoothness by feeling the surfaces and try to come up with a very subjective ranking of these planers based on the maple that we did, the maple tests. Um, while all the planers produce a smooth finish to the touch, there was quite a variation of smoothness resulting from the mill marks and scallops. So there was div uh, uh, differences in, in finishing. The DeWalt 735X was by far the best finish of all the samples we planed. The Amplitude of the milling marks was consistently smaller and there was very little scalloping on the surface compared to the other planers. So um, that, that gave the nicest finish by far. It was just, there was no comparison. This is likely attributed to the fact that it's got a powerful motor, it's got three blades, um, did well. Second place was the Triton, the TPT-125 followed by the Rigid, the R4331 in third place. 
both the Triton and the, uh, the Rigid had similar results, very close. Coming in fourth was the Delta, the 22590, with minimal milling marks, but some noticeable scalloping. Uh, let's talk about blade change evaluations and, and difficulty. It's easy or difficult to change a blade in any given machine, we get that. Our crew took each machine, armed with the instructions, and we changed the blade. And we timed it and we evaluated the difficulty and, and what was involved. Um, obviously the planers with three blades take a little bit more time than two blades. We get that. Uh, but this is a process, but this, is this process easier on some, machine, some of the machines than other machines. So the times required to change the blades varied, right? Uh, from 11 minutes all the way up to 25 minutes. The reality is though that you might only change your blades once a year, maybe. So the difference really didn't matter to us to warrant whether you would buy this machine based on 11 or 25 minutes. Therefore, we're not gonna rank this category, we didn't. We simply share the data with you so that you can see the blade change time, and that it wasn't really an overly complicated process. Another thing we looked at was warranty. Warranties are really important to some users, and many of you have been asking us to include them in our reviews. So we did. Um, while ranking the warranties might seem simple, it's not. <laughs> it's not at all. They're all different. We decided to list them rather than rank them. Ultimately, warranties can be t a tough issue, and how easily you get a warranty service is likely to be as important as how many years the warranty covers. So we'll let you be your own, make your own determination on which warranty appeals to you best. But we're gonna list it, and we go into detail in the article on it. Uh, price evaluation. The winner of the price evaluation was the Porta Cable, the PC305PT. Price is a huge part of the equation when determining which tool is best for you. There is a huge difference in pricing in this test from the low planer at 300 all the way up to the high planer at 600. We're ranking these straight on the lowest to highest with prices available right now at the time of the filming of this video. We realize that a value proposition uh, that many people will, will look at and and will factor into their overall ranking when price and other categories are combined, but we're gonna show this as a rank. Finishing with the best price was the Porta Cable, and that, that rounded up around $320. The most expensive planer was the Makita 2012NB, and that was $650. So, who has the overall best winner? Best benchtop thickness planer. It was the DeWalt 735X. And here again, we're trying to rank these tools in this head-to-head -to, -head to give you the winner. Um, the more that we do, the more we learn. And in this evaluation, we've taken a slightly different approach. Some of the categories that we, we set out to evaluate, we decided not to include in our final ranking. Um, and there was reasons for that, and I kind of went through those reasons. However, we do provide you with all of the information from all the categories we looked at because we feel it's important to some of the readers. Also, the more that we do these, some folks comment about how they would weigh things differently in different categories. That's all great feedback, but ultimately we need to come up with a winner, our winner. So, but each of you can take the data that we've presented and you can weigh it differently. You can do whatever you want with the data we did and you can best match your needs and come up with your own best winner or winner. So, we ranked the planers in four categories for our final evaluation. Finishing in first place by a large, large margin, margin was a DeWalt DW735X. And this wasn't a surprise as we, several of us have this planer and we've been using it for a long time in our shops. And it's really the best benchtop thickness planer on the market without a doubt. What surprised us was the second and third place winners. So the Triton, the TPT-125, and the Rigid, the R4331. If you're looking for a good performing, affordable planer, the Triton is absolutely worth noting and looking at. The Rigid has a really nice lineup of woodworking tools as well, and often goes unnoticed. And it was really nice to see them perform well in this category. While the Delta 22590 finished near the end of this evaluation, the entire team felt like it was a nice planer to consider. You're just gonna have to do a little bit more surface prep. The Makita is an extremely well-built well built and really nice featured planer, but the price wasn't as competitive 
and the finish, at least on the materials that we tested, weren't nearly as good as some of the other models that we looked at. So, there you have it. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video. Please comment and subscribe. We welcome your comments and we'd love to have your support and, and get your feedback. Also, please check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We have two channels each, Toolbox Buzz and Concord Carpenter. Both have Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys.